Hey fellow murder peeps, I'm Sarah. And I'm Anthony. Welcome to Bonding Over Murder, the show where I tell Anthony true crime stories he's never heard of before. Okay, for today's episode, we're joined by Anthony's oldest friend, Cam. Hello. <laughs> Maybe a little closer to the mic there, bud. <laughs> he's gonna need some warming up, folks. <laughs> I'm sure he'll be fine by the end of the episode. Uh, got a case you want us to cover? Email us at bondingovermurder at gmail.com. Today we're covering our first kidnapping case, the abduction of Fusako Sano in the Niigata District, Japan. So we're going to be butchering some names today, I think, I right? thought I was fine. Okay, well, I didn't say I was going to be fine. <laughs> sure. What was the name again? Fusako Sano, right? Fusako yeah, Sano, and then Niigata. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I know my Japanese names. Okay. Either way, uh, it's also known as the Niigata Girl Confinement Incident, and it was about a girl who was taken when she's nine years old and rescued nine years later. So no one dies this episode. Hooray! Uh, I hear that a lot in American uh, true crime is the people I was getting kidnapped and having the murderers kids and Oh yeah. Yeah, like JC stuff. it's yeah. a very JC Lee Duggard esque case, except without the children, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. And also nine years instead of eighteen years. Mm -hmm. yeah. So either way, uh let's get into it. So I'm just gonna call her by her last name out of respect. So Sano was born on November 28th, 1980 in Japan. I didn't get her birth city for some reason. Uh, her family lived in a small town called Sanjo City, uh, which is a two hour and 17 minute train ride north of Tokyo. So wasn't she born in Sanjo then? It didn't say. We assume. I'm assuming. Okay. I couldn't find that, but either way, uh, the town is surrounded by forests, mountains, and is close to the Sea of Japan. Around the time of her abduction, she was in grade four and was considered a typical elementary student. So, Sano was last seen watching a baseball game at the school and walked home afterwards. In Japan, it's normal for students to walk, bike, or take transit to get home by themselves. In small towns like Sanjo, the neighbors and the community, uh, the community watch keep an eye on the kids during their commute to make sure that nothing happens. Okay. Uh, so we're just going to get a little backstory of the kidnapper, just so you kind of know his level of crazy. Uh, his name is Nobuyuki Sato, and he was born in 1963 in Kashiwazaki City, which is about a 52-minute drive away from Sanjo City. Okay. So like so, from here to Red Deer. Essentially, yeah. Uh, his father worked as a truck driver until he started his own business. He married Sato's mother in his 60s, and his mother being uh, was 36 at the time of their marriage, which is kind of sketchballs hmm. a little bit. Uh, Sato wasn't very close with his father due to the age difference and was teased a lot for it in school as well. His mother was very loving and would buy him anything he wanted. Both of his parents had mental illnesses, and he would later share his father's obsessive cleaning habits. So he was very OCD, but, well, he actually later gets diagnosed with OCD. Okay. Uh, very clean, doesn't like dirty things. Uh, huge issue for him. So his mother would visit a hospital regularly for her illness. So she would just get check-ins, okay. essentially. But what, what does it say what illness she had? No, I oh. couldn't find that. Just that they both had mental illnesses. I'm assuming the dad has OCD as well, based on the, the they share the obsessive cleaning yeah. a habit. So that's what I guess. I don't know. Does OCD run in families? Yes. It's a inherited... Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Well, there it's you go. It's a genetic thing. Yeah, it's a genetic so. thing. Okay. Yeah. So I'd assume that they had the same thing. Because he hated dirt, he was afraid to, like, he was afraid to go to school. Okay. He still graduated. So he's a, he's like a germaphobe almost. Essentially, yeah. Right. Okay. Which, I don't really get how that works with things that happen later, but we'll get to that. Um, OCD is like a selective thing. Okay. So it's not exactly uh, just all about dirt. There's also people who are OCD, people who are also very dirty. Oh, okay. Yeah, like they'll live in their own filth. Oh, okay. But but they hate other dirty things. Yeah, it's it's, it's a weird selective. Oh, uh, okay. Because I was going to be like, he hates dirty things, <laughs> but later there's some like stuff that is very dirty that he lives it's, day in and day, it, day out of. It's more of like a, the, they're particular about stuff. Oh, okay. To an obsessive amount. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so he worked at a car parts factory temporarily after graduating high school, but never worked again after that. And funny story about why he stopped working is apparently on his way to work one day, 
he got caught in a spider's web and that traumatized him to the point where he never went back. <laughs> same. <laughs> Honestly, hon, I think you would do the same thing if you walked into a spider's web. It's like, I quit! Well, no, that was on his commute to work. I know. That wasn't yeah. even at the job. It sounds like, you, like you're most dramatic. Like <laughs> You're walking towards work. I quit! Ah, spiders! I just kind of get sad if I do that. I'm like, oh, that spider spent so many hours doing that. Yeah. Uh, I'm just like it's on me it's on me yeah Uh, I I freak out but I don't kill spiders I I'm fine with them being in the house as long as they don't go near me essentially and usually they don't they don't like coming near humans so it's a beautiful beautiful relationship uh so after his father's death in 1989 it was reported that he became increasingly violent neighbors saw him break doors and windows in the house and noticed his mother had black eyes and bruises oh boy yeah, so yeah, okay. he's he's a violent dude. Uh, he repeatedly beat her and what, even used a stun gun to abuse her. Wow. This, du- this dude is obsessed with his stun gun. I'm just going to, like, I'm. you're going to, f- it comes up a lot. So sorry, the the uh, kidnapper in this case, he's abusing his mother? Yes. Okay. Yes, and, and where's abusing- the father at this point? He. This is after he died. Oh, so okay. shortly after his dad died, he got more violent and started abusing his mom in various ways, including a stun gun. I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, so on June 13th, 1989, Sato was arrested for attempting to kidnap a young girl and also for violence. He was sentenced to one year in prison and three years of suspended uh, suspended sentence at the Nagaoka branch of the Niigata District Court. So essentially, he over a year before our case starts with uh, Sano, he attempted to kidnap a, a different young girl and got caught and arrested for it. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, and I, this is a little over a year before our case happens. Any information on how he failed to, to kidnap um, someone? From what I read is a teacher saw him do it and like came rushing over. Oh, okay, so is, he was caught. what I read, ca- yeah. Caught in the act of kidnapping someone. Essentially, someone's. yeah. So uh, despite being convicted, it was later discovered that his name was never added to the list of registered sex offenders. Yeah, it was a different world back then for sure because I know we in like Canada didn't get super crazy about abductions and stuff like that until the Amber case. Yeah. Where the Amber oh, alert okay. came from. And then okay. they had all those like PSAs and everything like that. And okay, hold on a second. Out. Amber alert is from a case. Was it from a girl named Amber? Yeah, that's why it got named. No way. Yeah. And that was like the first one that started the pro. What happened there? Was it something very specific or was it just the, the case that broke the camel's back? And- I might just do that in an episode later. That yeah. sounds interesting. It was uh, just a big like media coverage for it. So Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, for anyone who uh, doesn't have the system we do, in, in Alberta anyways, we get this uh, this system-wide alarm system that goes off on all our phones, our all our TVs and everything. Across the province we or get it, other provinces. We get it for tornadoes as well, but generally we get it for Amber Alert. So that's when yeah. a, a kid goes missing mm-hmm. or gets kidnapped and uh everyone's put on the alert it'll wake you up in the middle of the night too oh it, it's it's loud yeah it's like an, loud. it's like a security alarm going off like when someone breaks into your house it's like it's like but that it's, loud. it's like a klaxon alarm it's like burr, burr. <laughs> yeah it's it's just yeah a lot and then um oh yeah and then we got the uh we got that same alarm for the pandemic too when we went into a state of yeah. emergency it, all our phones went off and woke us up in the middle of the night well, I, one time that was irritating was a couple months ago when it was like new restriction measures. I'm like, yeah, you're not locking us down. Why are you sending this in the emergency <laughs> alert system? Like, yeah. I don't get it. <laughs> Either way. So fast forward to the abduction. Uh, so just for re- like to go back, June 13th, 1989 is when he was arrested for trying to kidnap another girl. Okay. So this is November 13th, 1990, when Sano was walking home from the baseball game. And uh, 27-year-old Sato saw her and decided to take her when he was driving around. So he took her at knife point, tied up her hands and legs, then shoved her in the trunk. Wow. And nobody saw. Uh, It was nighttime. Yeah. And she was walking home from the baseball game, so it was dark. Wow. Because it's November, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's like a more rural area. Yeah, yeah. So there's... Yeah, I believe she's walking like down to like a dirt road or something. Yeah, so you're yeah. not gonna. It's it's like someone taking you on like a range road or something like that. Yeah, you never expect it to happen <laughs> to you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so he then drove home. Uh, parked in the back of the house so his mother wouldn't see him. 
blindfolded her, and then took her up to his room, then put tape over her mouth. He then sneaked back down the stairs to move his car to the usual spot, entered the house, and greeted his mother like he always does. No, of course he did. Very polite. Yeah. Just to act like nothing happened, it's a regular day, no sketchiness is going I mean, on, but apparently. This is, is the same guy who's do. already stun gunned Beating his mom. His mom and, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, so yeah. she's probably just happy if he's not paying attention to her. Yeah. 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 Boy. Uh, so... We're going to go to the other side. So on the day of her kidnapping, Sano's mother contacted the police around 7.45 p.m. that night when she didn't return home. So 7.45 in November, like, it's cl- it's dark by, like, 5. So Depending on where you are. It's not... Well, I think they're similar to us, aren't they? Uh, Japan, yeah, I think... Yeah, like, for as far as, you know, like, weather. As far north? No, no, it's, it's not weather. It's how far north you are. Yeah, I think yeah. they're close. We're north enough that around in November, around five thirty, it's usually Max, pretty. It's yeah. usually pretty dark. They're yeah, slightly above the equator, I think. Like, oh, oh so, so they're more seven, south. So seven forty-five, there there might still be light out. It's probably dusk. Yeah, probably in November. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We're we're very far from the equator. Yeah. Yes. We are. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we are. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the next day, a huge search was mounted. Police were able to gather more than a hundred. Um, you know, individuals for the search, and that was doubled the next day. So, 100 people the first day, and then 200 people uh, joined the next day. Oh, okay. Uh, their search area included neighboring towns and cities. On top of people searching on foot, aerial searches were also being done. Okay. So, over, and then over 20,000 posters with her face and name were distributed through the prefecture. So, I'm assuming pre- prefecture is like their version of a province, I would assume. Or territory. Um- it's like... Because I know they have a bunch of different pre- prefectures. Bigger than a neighborhood. Like, it, it, a prefecture but, includes multiple cities, doesn't it? Um, no, because they do have provinces. Oh, do they? So, oh, okay. I think a prefecture is like... A county? Yeah, maybe yeah, it's like, like a, county. a county, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, Sato lived only 55 kilometers, which is around a 40-minute drive away from where he took her and was only 200 meters from a, a police substation. Oh, wow. So, you're very close to the police and, you know, no one caught him. Yeah, he's ballsy. Yeah. I don't know if he's ballsy. He's just... Stupid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Rash enough for it to work. Just stupid, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, so, for the first three months of Sano's confinement, she was tied up with tape uh, while he constantly threatened to abandon her there. Oh, wow. He would say, you can't leave this room. You will live with me and I will be here all the time. If you try to escape, I will kill you and bury you in the mountains or throw your body into the sea. So he's got like sociopathic tendencies. And mind you, he's telling this to a nine-year-old girl. Oh, yeah. I forgot how old she She's was. She's nine it's, when this it's happens. It's like a power play. Yeah. Uh, yeah, fear tactic yeah. to keep her, to keep her, you know, from leaving. Emotional abuse. Yeah, yeah manipulation. Abuse. Yeah, he's manipulating her. Yeah. Um, so he would constantly beat her and again use the stun gun. Um, On a nine-year-old. Yep, yep. Wow. Uh, when she tried to escape and then just, you know... Whenever he felt like it, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, later, she even started using the stun gun on herself so she could get used to the pain. Wow. Smart, actually. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So good for her for that part. Uh, they didn't have a bathroom upstairs, so she rarely bathed and allegedly used buckets for a bathroom. So that's where I was kind of like, you know, he's OCD about cleanliness, but he's fine with having buckets full of human excrement in his room. Yeah, well, like Cam said, I mean, it's probably just OCD about certain dirt. Yeah. 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 And she almost never bathed because the, so his mom lived on the main floor and then he had the upstairs and he would get really violent whenever she tried to go near his room. Yeah. So she, she avoided the second floor like the plague, honestly. To be fair, I'm, I I still doubt that she wouldn't have heard screaming or noises or anything. I think she just didn't want to know what was going on. Well, She's scared of her son, there, right? There's evidence that she has knowledge, but we'll get to that. But yeah, she avoided the upstairs, and then I guess he avoided the downstairs, essentially. Yeah. Um, uh, it's a bit ridiculous, though. I mean, I, I understand that his mom's a victim, too, but for God's sakes, go to the police. But he was also probably just setting boundaries by, like, tasering his mom and beating her. <laughs> well, because he would you know. be violent before uh, before he kidnapped Sano. I know. Like, he, he, she would, he would beat her, bef- like, before then, so she stayed out of his area. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? So it wasn't because Sano was there. That's just what he always did. Still, go to the police. <laughs> yeah. Okay, by the third day of searching, a special unit was set up with 107 officers tasked in finding her. Wow. Yeah, so it was, there was a huge manhunt looking for her. Well, I mean, it makes sense. She's nine. 
right? Yeah. That's a big deal in a small town, especially. That was like the first 48, right? Like she just went missing. Yeah. And now they're trying to find her before too much well, time passes. this is passes. the third day. This is 72 hours okay. later. First 72 then. Well, yeah. no, 72 is the, the actual um, amount that usually can file reports now. Oh, okay. but I think with kids, it's a little different. Especially yeah. someone that's nine. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. that's pretty young. Uh, so despite all the searches, uh, they came up with nothing, obviously. Yeah, because they didn't break down people's doors and search their houses. No. Uh, another setback was that as the case became more famous, people started coming forward claiming that they were the abductor. Oh, that's shitty. Copycat. Yeah. and all that. Yeah. But like, were they actually turning themselves in or were they, they just were like just, they fit were just crank making, calls? Uh, they were, the leads were followed, but, um, you know, nothing came of it. So lots of money and time was put into these leads. Um, but obviously they came up with nothing because people uh, sometimes are assholes. Imagine being that hard up for attention. <laughs> <laughs> you need to claim you're the kidnapper. I kidnapped a nine-year-old girl. Five minutes yeah. of fame. Woo! I kidnapped this girl. Everybody's looking do at it, me. Do it for the vine. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that wasn't a thing back in the 90s, but you know, either way. Um, so for a time, this one I found interesting. So for a time, the police thought of the possibility that North Korean operatives took her since it happened to at least 17 Japanese citizens during the 70s and 80s. I did not know that. Oh, that wow. is um Korea despises Japan. Like it's a huge thing. I didn't know they kidnapped people from Japan. Yeah, I mean... I think I've heard stories about that for sure. Oh, okay. Just, well, there you go. Okay. And they assimilate them into uh, their culture. Culture, yeah. Because they get kids, right? Because I think it ha- there's a famous Japanese case that actually that happened. I'm gonna look into <laughs> yeah. that for a future episode because that is like news to me. Um, obviously, they didn't in this case. I know I've seen ants do that. <laughs> they'll st- <laughs> they'll what? St- one ant colony will raid the other ant colony and take their eggs and then raise their young as slaves, like Vikings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Vikings, ants, and Koreans. <laughs> North Koreans. I don't know if South Korea does that, but you never know. Never know. In the 70s and the 80s. They're crazy yeah. times. <laughs> crazy Organized times. Organized crime, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so on November 19th, six days after her disappearance, the special unit was reduced to 80 officers, and by Christmas, the search stopped. Ah, sad. They can only do a full-time search, I guess, for so long yeah. until it just becomes an open case, I guess. Yeah. 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 So um, the case was still open and leads were still being followed, but again, they never went anywhere. Uh, so even though they followed all the leads of p- potential sex offenders in the area, uh, Sato was never questioned because his name was still not put on the list of sex offenders after his arrest in June of 1989. Wow. Yeah, so after he was caught in the act of abducting somebody. A young girl. Wasn't he... I, I missed this part. Did he serve any time for that? One he year. Was, one year in prison. One year. All yeah. right. Yeah, so he, he was convicted and, and did time for it. So he should have been on the sex offender list. And people were, like, pissed off at the police for this because they felt like they, they failed, essentially. Totally. Yeah. yeah. No, he's just a ticking time bomb. It's yeah. also a little crazy that he only got a year for attempted and then abduction. three-year something sentencing i didn't quite get it but like i'm i'm guessing three years probation is what that meant still we also didn't really um care much for talking about mental illness back in the day either yeah yeah that's true, true. that's true but i mean a catch and release program like that i mean no wonder he goes yeah. right back into <laughs> it yeah yeah if he was listed as a sex offender sato would have been a prime suspect when sano went missing i'll say yeah because yeah. <laughs> he's a 52 minute drive away mm. and over a year ago he kidnapped a girl around the tried same to. age tried to yeah. yeah they probably even knocked on his door who knows no yeah. they didn't <laughs> they, he was not on the radar whatsoever uh, during this whole thing oh my god like they didn't know about him at all like he wasn't on any records of like sex offender lists or any criminal list that they had wow yeah so he was off the radar completely. Um, so back to, you know, Sato and Sano. Eventually, Sato laid down a boundary inside the room with tape and ordered her to stay in it. Oh, so imprisoned he inside the prison. So it's re- so he kept the boundary and basically just used fear tactics to keep her in the room because he never really locked the door. He didn't always lock the door. Yeah. But he just used the manipulation right to keep her in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he felt he would feed her three times a day, usually microwave meals or from a bento box his mother made. 
So she did make her food. I don't know if she knew that she was making her food <laughs> or that she was just making her son food. Oh, I'm sure she knew. You can't tase someone and not hear the screams from upstairs. Yeah. No, I'm sure she... Or the seizing. Hey, son, how come you yeah. keep bringing buckets of shit downstairs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, Ma. <laughs> no, just, he's probably just chucking it out the window. There's just like a pile of shit. Oh, out there. <laughs> oh. Once again, how did you not notice? That's yeah. just the dung pile. <laughs> That's just my son's dung, dung pile. Don't yeah. worry about it, guys. And yeah. the neighbors are like, uh, can you do something about it? It's like, oh, no, it, he, he doesn't want me to touch it. Yeah, like, I, don't I stopped putting my pies on Science the... experiment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she stopped putting her pies on the windowsill with that dung pile outside. <laughs> so gross uh so sato planned to keep her malnourished and weak so she would be unable to escape yeah and mission accomplished essentially uh he also cut her hair and made her wear his clothes and if they didn't fit he would go out and steal clothes that did fit her but they were also men's clothes so he never bought her really any women's clothes i wonder what i wonder what you would make of that like what what uh what's going on there that makes maybe pretending that she's a boy because he cut her hair short yeah and then made her wear yeah, of some yeah. Sorts. What, what's going know. on in the mind of the psychopath? I don't know. Uh, so she spent her time listening to the radio until her final year when she was allowed to watch TV. Uh, and she was also homeschooled by Sato. Wow. So I, she probably I, got, I, 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 I know you're not going to tell us until we get there, but mm-hmm. I'm predicting Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I actually didn't find any record of that. Like, but like, you know, they kept, once uh, she was rescued, they gave, like, uh, I got, like, little updates on what she's doing, but, like, she's pretty away from the limelight, which is probably how well, it should be. Well, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. but I, I mean, like... Well, in, when, the, in the States, they don't always But when you see these the abduction limelight. cases, and they slowly get more and more privileges, that is, that's what we saw with the one where she was abducted for 18 years and had his kids and everything like that. Like, she started off in the shed not allowed to leave and then eventually she had free reign to go and get groceries and raise her kids and everything. I don't think with JC Lee Duggard it was Stockholm syndrome. I think it's just again the fear manipulation, right? She was afraid uh cuz I read her book. I have her book and basically she said that uh he kept telling her that if she escapes then he'll do this to someone else. Right. No. So she just kind of accepted her fate, which is what Sano said that she eventually did too. Right. I, I kind of get that. But I, I also think Stockholm Syndrome has to play a factor into why she didn't think she could get him arrested or anything. Like, you know what I mean? Like, She's also nine. Oh, well, this this girl, <laughs> yeah. we, we were going off on... Yeah. on J.C. Lee Duggar uh, was 11. Lee so it's not that but much... But she wasn't by the time she had all of her freedoms that he gave her, right? Like, eventually... And, and I don't, I'm not, by the way, I, he's still a piece of shit. I'm not saying yes. anything like that, but, uh, and all the respect for JC Lee. Absolutely. Duggard. Absolutely. No, yeah. I'm just saying, I believe Stockholm syndrome had to play a factor in there. Yeah. I, I don't think it was just fear tactics. I think there's, cause I don't really understand how Stockholm syndrome works, but you have to start to grow dependent on your situation a little bit. Right? I think it's more so you're so starved for human interaction uh, cause they're the only one you're seeing that, uh, you grow an attachment with them because we're social creatures as humans. Yeah. We need to be with other humans. And if he, he's the only human you're seeing, then you're going to definitely create some bond with them. You can't not. Yeah. But I don't, you know, I don't think all bonds are considered Stockholm Syndrome. I didn't say they were. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so either way, he would repeatedly abuse her as, you know, what I mentioned. And then he would threaten her with a knife if she didn't do what he told her to. Right. Uh, it's it's estimated that Sato hit her 200 to 300 times during her captivity. That's a strange estimate. I mean, she's been there for how long? So um, like... nine years in total. So... One hit every month? Maybe she kept count in some way. Oh, uh, yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I'm not sure. That's just what uh, one of the articles said. So, like I said, he never locked the door, really. Uh, but Sano was too scared to escape and eventually lost her energy and resigned herself to her fate. Because, yeah, she's malnourished and weak, yeah. so she couldn't really move that well because of that. Yeah. And, you know, she was just like, hey, I guess this is my life now. That's horrifying. It's a terrible thing for a child to have to accept. And for that long. Yeah. How many years? Uh, Nine years. So half her lifetime. It's like So when she's nine and then another nine years is in captivity. So by yeah. the time she's 18, half her life. Uh, she was 19 because uh, she got rescued after her birthday. <laughs> right. Technically. So. Happy um, birthday. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that is a happy birthday. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. 
I'll get to it. Um, she would eventually start fainting from na- malnutrition and suffered from muscle atrophy in her legs, which made it very hard to walk on her own. Oh, yeah. Yeah, probably anemic as well. I'm assuming so, but that wasn't... Uh, one yeah. article said that she had jaundice, but I couldn't get any other articles to yeah. confirm that, so... It would make sense. Jaundice though. is a thing that goes with malnutrition. And liver yeah. disorder. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but their basis was that she was kept in a dark room, so that's why she got jaundice. And I was like, I don't know if that no, makes sense. No, no. You don't get <laughs> yeah. jaundice from a lack of sunlight. Yeah, but she was in a dark room, so, yeah. you know. Uh, Vitamin D deficiency, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, in January of 1996, six years after her ad- abduction, Sato's mother, who was 73 years old at the time, called the Kashiwazaki Health Center, stating that she was concerned about her son and said that he had been acting violently towards her. So she did file a complaint, but nothing was done. Um, nobody went by the house to investigate from the health center. Yeah. You know, nothing happened. What does this guy do for a living? Like He's unemployed. He doesn't work. Like I said, that, that car parts factory job from like after high school, he never worked again after he left there. And he lives off his, what, his father? Mother. His mother. And his mother lives off of her uh, husband. She, she works. Oh, she does work. She she works in insurance, I guess. Or she worked in insurance. Wow. So he's like a hikikomori. He kind of just stays inside es- Essentially, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Who dat? Uh, you can explain it, Cam. A hikikomori is a person who just stays in their house all day. Never leaves. Doesn't have a job. Oh, okay. Uh, neat is another kind of word for that but yeah it's a, it's a japanese term for someone who just doesn't work doesn't leave uh, okay. leaves trash everywhere usually exactly and that's um, what he is wow yeah it, it's a so crime. then there really was no way to escape him because he never left the house yeah because he's unemployed and stayed on in there all day wow yeah, yeah. uh so like i said nothing was done about the complaint uh she did complain again on january 12th and january 19th of 2000 but Again, nobody did anything or went by the house to investigate. So she's complained three times now to the health center about her husband or husband, her son acting violently towards her. And, you know, ugh, like nothing was happened. Wow. Which irritates the crap out of me. This, yeah. se- this poor 73 <laughs> year old woman has just been beaten for years and nobody's done a thing. Yeah. Hello, this convicted felon keeps beating me. Can you come? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nah. No, you're nah. fine. You're fine. It's probably nothing. <laughs> but did he do anything lately? What were you wearing? <laughs> oh <laughs> like, my God. Jesus. Uh, Seriously, were you wearing something that made him beat you up? <laughs> like, like, did he not like were your Were you shirt? asking for it? Were you wearing targets, yeah. ma'am? Were you wearing a shirt that said, hit me? <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so once Sato started beating her on a daily basis, she tried once more to have something done about it. So on January 28th, 2000, seven medical and health staff... Uh, visited the home. So like doctors and other like, you know, orderlies. Essentially. You will still notice no police, however. No, but no. Uh, this they is where. A and all that. And... This She's is... being beaten. <laughs> She's going to show up with black eyes. <laughs> like. <laughs> she yeah. should wear a warrant. Hello. Yeah. In my house is a grown man who beats me. Please come. They don't even need a warrant. They have permission to enter her house. I don't know. It is her house. A whole lot about Japanese police other than I neither do they I. are basically unarmed. And the way they deal with people is they wrap them in like a futon and kind of that's how they That would work. Stop them. Let's get the police futon out here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just wrap the them police up. futon. Get the police futon. Jimmy, get the police futon. <laughs> we gotta wrap up another I'm psychopath. <laughs> Okay, so the team of doctors who I'm hoping you're going to tell me are, like, trained in ninjutsu show up. So, so five of them entered the house. I'm assuming two stayed with the... I, I'm ass- They came with an ambulance, essentially. Uh, so even though they got no answer from anyone upstairs, they went up to investigate anyways. Sato was asleep when they opened the door to his room. He woke in as they entered, yelling, Why are you in my room? Pretty... Yeah, yeah, okay. pre- yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, he went into a fit of rage when they told him why they were there. So staff were able to subdue him and injected him with a sedative. Yeah, okay. Right on. Yeah, so they- I they... saw that a few times on my ambulance practicum too. Yeah, <laughs> yep. 
Exactly. Uh, I sentence you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> one, one time we had uh, we had a um, a senior citizen who uh, um, she she was suffering from dementia, and sometimes dementia presents itself in really strange ways. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so she started attacking all the yeah rage all the, is a huge dementia. yeah. So she started attacking all the care workers in her in her home, and then she started attacking the police. So when we got there, like they hadn't, they hadn't physically restrained her. They just had her in the back seat of the car, but she was on her back. She is in her nineties. She's on her back and kicking the ceiling and screeching, like, <laughs> wow. like with the vigor of a of a drunk teenager. Like yeah. So we had to we had to medically sedate her before we could you know safely treat her. Wow. But it was it was something to see a ninety some year old woman <laughs> stomping her feet on the roof of the car. Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna be late for Matlock. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, and then when and then when she woke up, you know, she started to become a little more lucid and couldn't remember any of it. So it was pretty heartbreaking to have to tell this. She was Scottish too. She had this really cute little Scottish accent. Mm-hmm. So you had to tell this Scottish ninety-year-old little lady that you know, well, ma'am, you were biting police officers. <laughs> She's like, yeah. oh, was I? My bad. My bad. No, if only, <laughs> if only she was like that. No, she refused any. She denied any of that. Happening. <laughs> I mean, she. she I, I don't didn't blame know her. What happened? Yeah, she. She thought. Of course, every... I wouldn't attack police officers. Yeah. Like, why would I do that? Yeah, she. She definitely thought it was a conspiracy. But <laughs> when she woke up, she thought like we oh, have wrongfully God. abducted her now and it was bad oh. yeah that's and awful you kept her in your house for nine years <laughs> yes what i did and, uh, <laughs> it's what you know. have to do <laughs> uh, anyways back to reality yeah. uh so once he was unconscious they prepared to transport him to the hospital as they exited the room they noticed movement under a blanket in the corner of the room so i i'm assuming she just stayed under a blanket or when they came in, she like hid under the blanket. I'm not he really probably sure. Threw a blanket over her and said, you can't come out from under the blanket. Or, Cause know, I'm sleeping. They're sleeping. I, I don't know this person's like a uh, way of living, but in a lot of traditional Japanese houses, they sleep on the floor. On right. Yeah. yeah. So it could have yeah. just been like something like that. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, so Obviously, it was Sano under the blanket. Mm. She initially asked if she could stay at the house, uh, but she too was transported to the hospital. Okay, she wanted to stay at the house. She wanted to stay at the house, yeah. So, like I said, there's got to be some Stockholm coming in. Or, I don't know. Just I, That's terrifying. what I'm going on. Yeah. I'm not a professional, but I'm going to say Stockholm. Especially that the first reaction is I want to stay here. Yeah. Not, I think she Not was get me the hell out of here. I think she's worried about getting beaten, you know? Or doing something wrong. I get it. Exactly. I'm sure Nine years of do. conditioning. I'm yeah. sure that's a part of Stockholm mm-hmm. is the fear. I'm just saying. it's. I think that's what's going on here. But anyways, let's carry on. Uh, so en route to the hospital, she gave them her name. And they quickly realized that she was the missing girl. <laughs> yeah. So, yay. Uh, Sano was hospitalized with PTSD, including nightmares, atrophy in her leg muscles, and reduced bone weight. Wow. Yeah. That you got to be really malnourished for that one. Yep. Yeah. yeah, like rickets basically. She Essentially, had developed rickets. Yeah. Uh police were immediately called and when she was stable, they were able to ask Sano what happened. She told them, "I was abducted near the school by a man who forced me into a car. For 9 years I did not take a step out of that house. Today I went out for the first time." That's insane. I can't even imagine. 9 years incarceration. Mm-hmm. Your I entire mean, childhood essentially that's being stuck in a house and being abused that's and not unreal. seeing anyone else but your abuser think about it that's that's uh 2013 so oh, jesus when you're at when you were working at trail appliances you got abducted then and you just today took a step outside and he only got two years for that <laughs> oh no, god no, he, he got more he got yeah. more yeah I'm, I'm about to go over to japan myself and finish this guy off if that's well, the case spoiler he's dead now so (laughs) we'll get to that but yeah i thought you'd feel better knowing that he's dead yep yeah so at first so she is reunited with her family but her mother didn't recognize her at first well of course yeah uh but both parents were profoundly relieved and said they never stopped thinking about her so you know nice very tearful tearfully you know tearful reunion yes exactly that's what i meant to say uh, so at the time of discovery, I just thought I'd add this because police uh, were getting lots of flack for this case. 
So this is just kind of like a little funny input. So at the time of discovery, the chief of the Niigata Prefectural Police Headquarters was playing Mahjong at a hot spring inn with the chief of the Kanto District Police Bureau, (laughs) three hours and 41 minute drives away from Niigata. So he was like almost four hours away from Niigata when she was discovered playing Mahjong at a hot spring. (laughs) It's getting a little hot in here. With his bud, who's also a chief of police in a different prefecture. We know what they were doing in that hot spring. (laughs) We should have been working. Um, So police were heavily criticized by the public for failing to investigate Sato. Because like I said. No kidding. Yeah. (laughs) Yep, so people weren't happy. And then I feel like it's just extra salt in the wound that uh, the chief of police was playing Mahjong in a hot spring. Well, when she was found, yeah. When she was found, like, I, well, was he Was he on, like, was he clocked in or was this guy on vacation? I'm assuming he was on vacation. It's just kind of a funny coincidence. Uh, okay. Like I said, I, I just added that as a fun little, little yeah. tidbit, you know? It was at this point that police revealed that he wasn't on the list of sexual offenders. So they didn't know that before. Like, the public didn't know that. Yeah. They just were like, why the hell didn't you investigate So him? is this just a clerical error? Like somehow so they meant to enter so. him and then he just didn't get in? Or? Like that's what it sounds like to me. He just wasn't put on the list, but well, I don't know. Did they have like an extensive list back then? Yeah, they, they, they had a list of that. sexual offenders yeah. that they looked through. Huh. So well, I'm maybe, assuming- Maybe money exchanged hands and he got himself off the list. But no, he doesn't sound clever no, enough no, for that. No, that, that like, definitely didn't happen. Because he failed so hard on the first one, it wasn't- considered like fully a i don't know abdu- abdu- abduction or whatever I don't know. We, we figured he was so bad at abducting really. people that we didn't want to <laughs> worry about him yeah he wouldn't right. try it again like over a year later like of course not no yeah, yeah. why good. why would he kidnap another girl <laughs> when he failed go. the first time <laughs> like why would that happen so two weeks after being admitted to the hospital sato was arrested good. yeah so he's officially in custody sato admitted to most of his crimes and uh evidence showed that he never sexually assaulted her stating that she was uh and one question about it he said that she was uh considered family and he was she was like a sister to him Weird. There's some strange stuff going on some in this Some like psyche. weird uh, like, only child syndrome yeah. he wanted. Yeah. Because he, he never sexually assaulted her or did anything sexual with her ever. So, like, yeah, that's yeah. something else. Almost like that's he wanted That's like a- the interesting part about this case because every time that someone's kept in captivity for that long, there's always a sexual component. Either he wanted a sister or a pet or something. But the, the weird thing is- Essentially. The, I, I, that's what I was thinking at yeah. first. At first, I'm like, well, maybe he just wants like a dolly, like a living doll to play with and dress up and cut the hair off. But he also punches the crap out of her and- And, and makes and her wear men's her clothes. And screams at her. So- that's not really things people do to their pets or dolls or like, it's just. No, it's, the dude's fucked up. That's like, all Like psychopath is. is what I mean because like, he's just not reacting to a universe yeah. that we live in. You know what I mean? He's in some completely yeah, different. Like bonkers yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Kind of uh, disregard. Yeah. So police questioned his mother who claimed to have no knowledge of Sano being in the house and that she avoided the upstairs because like I said, he'd get violent. Uh, Despite this claim, she reportedly made meals for Sano and was sent to get feminine products for her as well. Yeah, like I say, she knew. Why would he need tampons or pads? Just saying. No, she Sometimes knew. Sometimes you bleed from your butt and she needs to shove a big old thing of cotton in there. Big old thing of cotton for my bleeding butt ulcers. Yeah. No, but I mean, she knew. She knew. Let's be real. The, the beating and the tasering and uh, stuff like amazing. that, like you would hear that. You, she knew. <laughs> she she knew she was just too scared to 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 go and, you know, stop the system. That's right? true. I'm sorry. I'm just You just can't get off the butt tampons. <laughs> The butt pawns. Hey man, <laughs> don't steal my trademark. <laughs> trademark, butt pawns. <laughs> anyway, um, after his arrest, Sato was sent for a psychological assessment to see if he was mentally fit for trial. Nope. The doctors concluded that Sato was able to tell right from wrong and was mentally fit at the time of the abduction. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. yeah. So their conclusion was that Sato suffered from schizotypal... Typal- personality disorder yeah. and OCD at the time of the abduc- abduction and the disorders would have somewhat affected his judgment, but uh, he should still be criminally uh, held responsible. I don't know. I think this guy's three sheets to the wind. I don't think he's... <sighs> but he, he he's would... so violent though. That doesn't make him responsible just because he's violent. I think he needs an asylum. Just I... my opinion, but like the, the insanity plea a lot of the time is just overused. Yeah. It's true, but this guy really does seem insane. 
Yeah, but he I mean, should still be tried for. <laughs> but he's insane. What's the uh, point of an insanity plea if you don't if you don't uh, hold it up to insane people? Well, we'll go back to one of our previous episodes because no. this one reminded me of uh, our episode for the Granny Ripper. Yeah, um, she's from Russia. Oh yeah, Cam the Granny Ripper. That was something else. Cam hasn't listened to the episode. Shame. <laughs> uh so basically a little recap the granny ripper uh killed her roommate and other tenants in her house and then boiled their organs and ate them and she was not held criminally responsible because of her schizophrenia but she was still uh sentenced to like she was still sent to a hospital where she remains shit get it grandma yeah <laughs> nice cam <laughs> I mean, but that's what I'm saying here. Don't, don't get me wrong. It's like, what came first, the chicken or the egg? This guy's a piece of shit. But is he a piece of shit because he's crazy? That's what the courts you know what I mean? have to decide, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, the in, psychologists say, um, yeah, he should be tried okay. criminally. I don't know if emotions play a factor in there, though. It's just like they really want to see him tried. And, well, well I know the prosecutors do. Cry yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. There's some pressure to, yeah. to stand yeah. him on trial. I'm telling you, I, I think this guy's bonkers. Yes, I, he, I, he, he needs an asylum. He, he needs, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so prosecutors demanded 15 years in prison, 10 years for the wow. abduction, and an additional five years for theft. That's light. He's gonna only going to be in prison for slightly longer than the person he imprisoned. Yeah. That's insane. Uh, so, because prosecutors felt like 10 years wasn't long enough, so they no. added that petty theft on for an additional five years. <laughs> still, I'll, I'll tell you what the theft was, f- like what... They wanted him to go to five years for theft for. He was charged with stealing four camisoles worth 2,400 yen, which is $26 Canadian for Sano in 1998. Okay, yeah, they, so that they was a were, petty theft that they threw five years theft, on for. Exactly. They just felt yeah. like, the prosecutors felt like it wasn't enough. Uh, that's actually, that's exactly yeah. what happens in Les Mis. He steals a loaf of bread and he gets five years for what you did. <laughs> yep, yep. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Uh, just in modern times, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I, theft is such a dumb prosecution for well, sure. Yeah. yeah, but they're just adding it because they don't want yeah. him to only yeah, spend they're throwing, 10 years. They're throwing, yeah. Yeah. Still, I would have given him 10 years for each year he abducted somebody. But you know what? I wouldn't have given him any years in the sense that just he needs to be locked away for the rest of his life. This guy is unrehabilitatable. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion, anyways. Oh, I don't. I'll get to I it. I don't think you could rehab this guy. I'll get to it. Uh, so on January twenty second, two thousand two, Sato was sentenced to fourteen years for the abduction and confinement resulting in injury and theft. You got a year off. No. Well, you said fifteen originally, like ten uh, plus five. Yeah. So he was sentenced to fourteen. So yeah, I guess that's what they wanted to prosecute him for, but he got fourteen, which is still pretty good. Mm, something. Uh. So. Because the case was so big, 1,260 people lined up to try and get one of the 27 tickets for the public gallery to hear the ruling. Wow. Yeah. So 1,200 people fought to get, you know, one of the 27. That's like the Casey Anthony trial. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was so huge. Uh, So in total, Sano was confined for nine years, two months, and 15 days. Wow. Yeah, it, that's her grand total. Uh, so after she was rescued, Sano was appointed to a medical team by the prefecture Good. for counseling and like rehab Good. Uh, that she would see two to four times a month. Um, last record I got was in 2003, and she was still doing that. I think she'll probably be later. doing some kind of therapy for the rest yeah, of her life. But confirmed at least until 2003. Yeah. Uh, so she eventually recovered from her injuries and gradually came to live a peaceful life. She got her driver's license and spends most of her days watching soccer matches and taking photos of flower in the flower flowers in the garden. Good, that makes me happy. Yeah, so she's you know she's with her family. She's she's at peace now. You, you know, like yeah, getting you, therapy. You go live your happy life. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So our first episode that has a happy ending. Yay! <laughs> uh, so. Sato was released in 2015 at the age of 52. Uh, his mother had passed away while he was in prison. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so after being released, he changed his name and moved to the Chiba Prefecture, which is like five hour drive away. Okay. Uh, from Niigata. He was prescribed medication that he took regularly and was receiving therapy for his mental illness. Oh, okay. Uh, so he got welfare from the government and lived at a government living center for the disabled until he passed away in 2017. Oh, Okay. So, so he was ish uh, rehabilitated. Essentially, I he mean, at least he was at least medicated to the point where he was no longer dangerous. Yeah. Okay. And 
to be and he was at a government like facility is yeah. where he lived so no chance of him like being able to beat people there or be violent there like they would just dope him up right so he kind of goes from a prison to an asylum almost uh that's what it sounds like it or just says or... yeah it just says yeah. government living center yeah that's what it said so i'm Should've assuming just gone straight there man like i don't know yeah. what the what's the point of the prison then i don't know I could go on and on about the prison system. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah we could talk all day yeah. about the prison system. I hear you. System. I'm, I'm right there with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so long story short, uh, some grown-ass man from Japan who should have known better thought it was okay to kidnap a young girl and rightfully was sent to prison. I mean, <laughs> to contradict what we were just yes. saying. Yes. <laughs> I still think that it was fine to send him to prison because, as they said, he knew right from wrong, and that's the main thing. I feel like their decision there was influenced based on the public outcry. I, again, what comes it's first? Are you, are you a piece of shit who happens to have mental illness? Or did the mental illness make you into a piece of shit? You so never hence, know. Had he have been medicated for his schizophrenia, would he have been a pleasant guy? Why we don't know. Both? Why not both? Yeah. He was both a piece of shit <laughs> and, and crazy. You can be both. Yeah. <laughs> don't be judgmental. We're trying someone. <laughs> someone needs to judge this guy. <laughs> Very good. Uh, so thanks for listening to our podcast. Check out our website, bondingovermurder.info, and find us on Instagram at bondingovermurderpodcast to get info on future episodes. Uh, I want to thank our guest Cam for joining us today. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I'm sure we'll have you on eventually at some point again. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Cam have been friends since grade one. Grade one. Yeah. Grade so one. long time. Yeah. We're 31 and 32 now. Or are you yeah. 33? No, 30. You're 32. 31 and 32 oh, now. Balls. Yeah, 31 <laughs> and 32, and we met when we were six. So yeah. we, there's so. actually a picture of us at my sixth birthday. <laughs> so I guess we met before that then. But yeah, there's a picture of me and Cam sitting at the table eating cake when we're, when we're like, when I turned six and Cam would have been seven. So that's okay. fair. <laughs> it's epic. Uh. Yeah, no, fair. Well, I hope you all enjoyed the episode. Our next one will be out on November 15th. Well, maybe we should kind of do this one. It's okay. a little bonus. You can do the also part. Uh, also, don't forget to follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. We're currently on Spotify and Google Podcasts. You can also find our RSS feed on our website. Until next time. Bye. bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.